Hello and welcome to the Longevity Learning Lab. Today we're going to take a look at this pattern that I picked up at a local flea market over the weekend. We'll take a look at some of the details of it and how parts were made prior to welding. So before welding was widely used in industry, many parts used to be fabricated using a casting process. So a pattern just like this, fabricated from wood, was pressed into sand before molten metal was poured into the casting. So let's take a moment and look at some of the details of it and see how things were made prior to welding. Okay, let's take a few moments here and look at some of the details of the pattern. So this pattern is a round disc that would have been cast out of either cast steel or cast iron. This yellow wedge would have been removed from the final piece that was cast. Then this part or this disc would have been formed into a helix so that it would become one of many components that would have been slipped over a center pipe to manufacture a screw conveyor or an auger for some type of agricultural equipment in the past. Even today we see the augers and the screw conveyors manufactured using welding but mimic and follow the same process that was used many years ago. So here we can see that the pattern is marked with 12 inches. So that tells us the finished diameter of the auger when the part has the six inch pitch that was formed into it. So this part and this part here would have been offset by six inches using a forming process after the part was cast and this wedge was cut out of it. We see that after the part was formed up, it would fit over a center uh, three inch pipe that would have transferred down the center. And so to make the auger or the screw conveyor, multiple of these pieces would have been cast, the wedge cut out, the helical shape formed into them, they would have all been slipped over some type of central pipe, and then depending upon how they were joining these together, this block may have included some type of screw or area where there was some type of fastening mechanism put in there, or they may have been cast or bolted or some other process to join these individual flights together. So I'm just trying to take a guess at how they were put together. I can only go by what the gentleman told me when I purchased the pattern. Uh, and the guy that he got it from. Uh, so this is the way parts were made prior to welding. A little closer we can see some of the details left over from days gone by from the folks that use these to manufacture these parts. So here we can even see some old pencil marks uh, left on the exterior here, uh, maybe from the pattern maker or the mold maker uh, to give themselves some notes or some numbers to guide themselves by, probably not too different than the numbers that we record on a welding procedure form nowadays. We also see some of the radiuses, some of the fine woodworking of the small letters, and then we also see here an example of the draft angle that's put into these patterns so that when the part is extracted from the sand, the sand is not upset or uh, disturbed as we try to retract it out as it would if it had just a straight up and down section or edge to it there. So all of these features, the radius, the draft angle, some of these cores that were removed or cut out at a later time, these were all important so that the component would come out and meet the quality standards that they needed for the day. So once again, thanks a lot for hanging out with us. If you like what you see, Subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back often. We'll have videos here from time to time to help give you information and knowledge in the area of welding. So we're, our hopes here are that you'll be successful in whatever you like to do and we hope that we can provide some information and knowledge to expand your capabilities in the area of welding. So once again, thanks for hanging out and we hope to see you again real soon.